I can hear the, the, the word weird very often. Uh, you, you refer to, to quantum uh, mechanics uh, uh, with the word weird quite often. And, and that brings me back to your example of, uh, that you mentioned earlier of Schrodinger's cat. I mean, first of all, I'm very, very happy that you mentioned uh, that you're not actually uh, doing experiments like that with cats, that it is a thought experiment. Uh, and I'm sure everyone has heard about it, probably even watched little videos or sketches. They've been around for a while. But nevertheless, it is still very, very confusing. Uh, please uh, continue and explain to us in layman's terms, what's this thought experiment about, what does it tell us? The Schrodinger cat is, is a thought experiment that uh, illustrates one of the very uh, particular properties of quantum mechanics is that the actual state of a system can be thought as being in a superposition of states. And each of these states correspond to a different specific outcome. And for example, in the case of the Schrodinger cat, the two states have the outcome, the cat is dead or the cat is alive. Now, if we think of a physical system uh, like an electron or like an atom, a, a physical system of an atomic scales, the, the, the states co have uh, outcomes that correspond to the values of a physical uh, property that can be energy, that can be angular momentum, that can be spin, that is also an angular momentum. So in quantum mechanics, a system can be in a superposition of several states. So it can be simultaneously in a superposition of states that correspond to several outcomes. And therefore, they will not be a definite outcome until a measurement is made. So if I come back to the cat, it means that the cat is simultaneously dead or alive until I try to measure this poor cat. So as soon as the observer steps in, as soon as the observer steps in, then it is just the moment you can't have all the different layers of superposition as an observer. It is just the moment you actually catch in that moment. That's what you refer to with measurement. Exactly. And, and this uh, way of measuring uh, is also specific of quantum mechanics. And so if I do a single measurement on a system that is in a superposition of state, as you rightly said, I will get one of the possible outcome that are associated with the many states that can be present in the superposition. And then the cat will be either alive or dead. But I can repeat the experiment. And so at each measurement that I will make on the same superposition of state, I can get one of the specific outcome of one state, the state that has been realized at the time I made the experiment. And so it means that I will measure the same outcome a certain number of times if I repeat the experiment. And the number of times that I measure that outcome is given by the weight of the corresponding state in the superposition. So think of a system that is in a superposition of two states, it means that if I do a large enough number of measurements, I will measure each outcome with a 50% probability. And it's exactly like tossing a coin that is, of course, unbiased. Otherwise, I will not get a half probability. And so this way of understanding how the measurement is made has, has a name in quantum mechanics. It is called the probabilistic interpretation of the measurement. It is the most widely accepted interpretation. And again, it has been verified by uh, all the experiments that have been set up to test this prediction up to now. But it was not accepted by every scientist since it has been proposed, for example, 
Einstein strongly objected to this interpretation and he said, uh, it's a very famous quote of Einstein, that uh, God does not play dice, by, by which it means that he, re he refused this interpretation. Is he right or wrong? I mean, quantum physics, as we've now understood it, and certainly this, uh, the concept of superposition seems to contradict Einstein. Yes, and so up to now, this probabilistic interpretation uh, stood the test of time, like most of the prediction of quantum mechanics, or all the prediction of quantum mechanics, actually. Um, so there are other interpretations of the measurement of a superposition of states. And one that is the often discussed and one that is the, the most common is the interpretation of the parallel worlds. In this interpretation, it is uh, stated that uh, once the outcome has been measured, the system that results for the measurement and the observer evolve separately uh, in time and follow their own history. And so in this interpretation, each outcome follows a different history and evolves differently in time after the measurement. And this is why this interpretation is known that of the parallel worlds. There is no experimental evidence that supports this interpretation up to now, but who knows, right? <laughs> Science reserves surprises. There could be more Professor Remarkles and more Monica Joneses and more everyone around, all in parallel worlds. Yes, it's one possibility. Well, um, from what I understand, uh, these parallel worlds also, uh, I mean, if, if there was another version of you, then that other version probably now wouldn't wear a yellow jumper, but maybe a red jumper or, or a coat, uh, or, or to put it uh, sort of more scientific, uh, in this parallel uh, version, there could be an apple and at the same time an orange, or you could have uh, zero and at the same time one. So all of this is, is very, very confusing ultimately. Uh, and it leads me to another uh, sort of thought experiment, uh, which is this famous cloud that supposedly can go through a wall, um, if it can be here and there at the same time. Again, from a physical point of view, is that possible? Is that what's, what's happening? Uh, indeed so. This is what's happening, at least again, at the atomic scale. So this uh, experiment uh, refer uh, refers to Another very important consequence of uh, the fact that at the atomic scale or in quantum physics, um, particles can also be a wave. And this imposes that uh, you cannot precisely localize a quantum object. Coming back to the, the wall, so it means that if you are uh, throwing a quantum particle uh, to a wall, depending of on its energy, it can be reflected or it can go through the wall. And this is of course completely different from the behavior of a classical uh, particle, because if you are throwing to the wall a classical particle, it can be reflected if it doesn't have enough energy, but if you throw it and it has enough energy, it will go over the wall. Quantum mechanics, even if it doesn't have enough energy, it can be transmitted through the wall. Now, if you want to come back uh, to the precise atomic nature of the cloud, the cloud is made of molecules, of water molecules, and so to each water molecule you can associate a wavelength that is inversely proportional to its mass and to its velocity, and therefore, depending on the thickness and on the height of the wall, the water molecule can be localized on one side of the wall, inside the wall, or on the other side of the wall. But what is possible for a water molecule is not possible for me, because, again, my mass is so much bigger that I will not have a very long wavelengths, I have a very small wavelength that is associated with me and therefore I am not very delocalized and so there is no way that I could be delocalized 
on the other side of the wall. Now, it, 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 it sounds very weird, but there are, again, a lot of technological applications that are precisely uh, exploiting this tunneling effect that is typical of quantum mechanics. And the um, tunneling effect is used in transistors, but it is also used to develop special kind of uh, microscopy, a kind of microscopy that is called tunneling scanning uh, microscopy. And this microscopy allows to image surfaces at the atomic scale and also to image, for example, if you deposit a molecule on the surface. And this is a very important instrument for all the high precision that we need at the atomic scale to build a quantum device. So tunneling effect well, is very important. You've, you've given us examples already, uh, the kind of uh, applications that can arise uh, from, from quantum physics. Um, and I think for us not to get completely lost, however exciting all the technicalities and the science is, it would be helpful to find out more applications, to have more examples of how we can actually experience and use the properties of quantum physics in our lives. The, the ones that are really present uh, in our lives are, um, were developed uh, some years ago, right? It, it takes always time before a new application comes to uh, everyday life. And so we, we talked about the, the, la the laser, right? The, the lasing effect, which is really exploiting the discreteness of energy of photon, the discreteness of um, energy in, in atoms to uh, get in, in specific cases an amplification of the emission of photon by, by the atom that has this very particular property that it is monoenergetic. And so this aspect of getting a source of, of photon that is monoenergetic is exploited in all the spectroscopic techniques actually that uh, we use, right, to identify compounds, to, to characterize them, to understand if uh, they are a biological molecule in the out, out, out there in space, but also uh, in medicine. And so a lot of imaging techniques uh, exploit uh, the laser or exploit properties, discreteness of energy level uh, in atoms in and uh, or the, the spin of nuclei. So for example, um, the, the, the imaging technique that is called uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, relies on the two state of spin of, of certain kind of nuclei to, to get an image. By the way, the, the laser, when it was invented in 1950, was declared a lab curiosity. Nobody cared about it. A and so you see also how Right in science, it is not always clear what will be really useful or not, or what will become a practical of practical use. Another aspect is the electron microscope, uh, which was invented in the 1960s. This allowed to, to get a better resolution in space because it used the wavelengths associated to a beam of electron. And using this tool, it became possible to see organite inside the cell. And so this led to a lot of progress in biology because it was possible uh, to, to go to, to develop cellular biology. And, and nowadays, with all the ways based on quantum mechanics that became possible, we go to molecular biology, right? We try to image molecules. Uh, not only organite uh, inside a cell. So these are examples that uh, are part of our day-to-day -day life.